Hi, to my geometry class. I uh, want to give you guys these notes for section 4.3, which is how you prove two triangles are congruent by angle side angle or angle angle side. So obviously we're going to focus on if you have two angles. And the very first part of your homework is going to give you pictures of triangles and they're going to ask you to identify if they're congruent by angle side angle or angle angle side and you have to be able to read the marks and I just want to remind you that you're not allowed to skip through two unmarked marks um, you cannot read past two unmarked parts when you're reading the markings on triangles. Okay, and what I mean by this is if I see the marks on this first triangle, triangle ACT, uh, what I see marked is an arc mark at C, so this is an angle, a tick mark on segment CA, so this is a side, a double arc mark at angle A, so this is also an angle, and when you read this, is this angle, angle, side, or is this angle, side, angle? And if you notice, if it were angle, angle, side, this side, CT, does not have a mark. This angle, T, also does not have a mark. And this side, uh, TA, does not have a mark. So these are three unmarked parts. and you're not allowed to read past two of them and so I can't go that direction which means I have to go the other direction which means this triangle is read angle side angle so triangle ACT has the markings of angle side angle um, if you look at this triangle this is also marking an angle this is marking a side and this is marking an angle and the question is how do you read this triangle is this angle side angle as well well, if I'm going to read it as angle side angle, um, I definitely have a double marked angle at N and a tick mark at S. But notice, angle left does not have any kind of mark. And side FI also does not have a mark, which means I cannot read this as an angle side angle because I'm passing through two unmarked parts. So. Um, I'm going to start here and name this an angle, angle side. Now, although in I uh, does not have any marks on it, it's only one unmarked piece, and I'm allowed to pass through one. I just cannot pass through two. So this is red angle, angle side. So this is the angle, angle side markings. This is definitely an angle side angle marking. And the question is, what about this last triangle? Well, this last triangle is marking an angle, another side, and another angle. So this triangle is also an angle, side, angle, triangle. So the question said, name the two triangles that are congruent by angle, side, angle. Well, it's this triangle number one and this triangle number two. So you can name them the first one any way you want. I choose to name it triangle ACT and it's going to be congruent to triangle. Now you have to match up the parts. And I started with angle A, which is two arc marks, so I have to match it up to angle D, which is also two arc marks. Letter C is one arc mark, so it must be matched up to letter G, which is also one arc mark. And then the last one is O. So triangle ACT is congruent to triangle DGO. Okay, let's do some proofs. I'm going to remind you that the only reasons why you can mark your own, your own markings is looking for vertical angles or common sides. So be sure to mark vertical angles or common sides. And don't forget, if you have a common side, we use the reflexive property. Any, that's the parts you're allowed to mark for the reason. Vertical angles are always congruent. and common size, we can use reflexive property. Also make sure we're looking for three congruent pieces. Three congruent pieces. 
Okay, let's see what we got going here. These are my statements. These are my reasons. Okay, first statement is always what you're given, and I'm given that angle A is congruent to angle B. And notice in the picture, angle A has one arc mark, and angle B also has one arc mark. And this is very important because this is one congruent statement. I'm also given that segment AP is congruent to segment BP. And if you notice in the picture given, segment AP has one tick mark, and segment BP also has one tick mark. And this is a second congruent statement. I always need three pieces of congruent statements in order to prove two triangles congruent. So I need a third piece. We're going to go back up here to say, be sure to mark vertical angles or common sides. And when I look at my picture, I clearly see vertical angles. Here is where I see my bow ties. So I'm going to mark them on the picture, and if you mark them on the picture, you write it as a statement. So angle APX for sure is congruent to angle BPY. And the reason why is because vertical angles are always congruent. Vertical angles are always congruent. And this is a beautiful thing because you can now see we have three congruent pieces in our statements. And the question is, are they valid reasons to state the triangles are congruent? When I read the marks, this is an angle, this is a side, and this is an angle matching this angle, this side, and this angle. And so I can say for sure the triangles are congruent. Triangle APX has to be congruent to triangle BPY. And the reason is because angle, side, angle. Okay, we're going to do another proof very similar to this. Remember, you can mark common sides or vertical angles, which look like the shape of bow ties. Here's my statements, and here's my reasons. I'm looking for three congruent parts. My first statement says angle B is congruent to angle D. And in the picture, angle B and angle D are marked with one arc mark, and this is one congruent statement. Also, what's given to me is that segment AB is parallel to segment CD, and this is given. All right, I only have one piece of congruent information, and I know I need three. Um, they gave you this statement, AB is parallel to CD, for a reason. We have to use it, and I want you to remember your fun angles. The letter F stood for corresponding angles, and if you have parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. The letter U stood for same side interior angles, and if you have parallel lines, then same side interior angles are supplementary. The letter N stood for alternate interior angles, and if you have parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. I'm looking for congruent pieces, so I'm looking for either corresponding angles or alternate interior angles, and in my picture, I can see this letter Z or N, which means I definitely have alternate interior angles. And these angles right here have to be congruent. So, because I have parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. I have to name them angle BAC for sure is congruent to angle DCA. And the reason is because excuse me, they're alternate interior angles. All right, this is another congruent statement. Right now I only have two. I still need one more. So don't forget, you need to look for vertical angles or common sides. I can see right here I have a common side. So I can list this equal to itself. AC has to be congruent to AC because of the reflexive property.
this is a third congruent statement, so now it's time to read the marks. And what I have marked is an angle, an angle, and a side of this triangle matching an angle, an angle, and a side of the other triangle. So I definitely have matching parts, which means I can say the triangles are congruent. So my last statement, triangle ABC for sure is congruent to triangle CDA because of angle, angle, side. Okay, we're going to have you try so a couple more. We're going to check for some understanding here. Um, question number one, which side is included be between angle R and angle F in triangle FTR? Well, I need a visual, so I'm going to draw a triangle FTR. Label it any way you want, F. T R and now I need to mark what I'm looking at. I'm looking at angle R, so I'm going to mark this angle right here. And angle F, I'm going to mark this angle right here. And which side is between these two? Well, this is the side that connects them. This side, RF, is between those angles. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for problem number two. Which angles in triangle STU include side U, segment US? So I'm going to just draw a generic triangle, label it triangle STU. And they want to know what angles are included in side US. So here's side US. And what angles are touching this side? Well, this angle is touching this side, and this angle is touching this side. So this is angle S and the other one's angle U. And we're done with that problem. Okay, last three problems. Tell whether you can prove the triangle is congruent by angle side angle or angle angle side. If you can, state a triangle congruence in the postulate or theorem you use. If not, write not possible. Don't forget, you're always allowed to make marks on your own for either a common side or vertical angles. All right, problem number three. Um, this triangle already has three given marks. Um, this is marking an angle. This is marking an angle. This is marking a side. This is marking an angle. This is marking an angle. This is marking a side. The marks match, and angle, angle, side is a valid reason, so I can immediately say the triangles are congruent. So triangle, when it says state a triangle congruence, they're saying this, triangle G H. I is congruent to triangle PQR. This is called a triangle congruence. Uh, give the postulate or theorem that we're using. We're using angle, angle, side. All right, here's the answer for problem number three. We're going to do the same thing for number four. Now, when I look at number four, I have absolutely no markings whatsoever that are congruent. I definitely got markings for parallel sides. Don't forget, parallel sides are arrows. So let's take care of that. Um, just very much like our last proof, I know these angles right here have to be congruent because vertical angles are congruent. So that's one congruence. I also know from our last theorem, or excuse me, our last proof, that PA has to be congruent to PA because of the reflexive property. So now what I have is I have an angle and a side mark matching another angle and a side. Where's the third piece? I can only mark common sides or vertical angles, nothing else, and I don't have any more information. So this is not possible to make a conclusion. I, I do not have enough information. looks like they are, but I can't say for a fact. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for number five. I notice in these triangles, I have two triangles, triangle ABX and triangle ACX, and both triangles have two markings. This is marking an angle, this is marking another angle that's matching this angle and this angle, so they both have two angles. Uh, is there anything else I can, I can mark? Well, common sides are vertical angles, and I clearly see a common side of AX. AX is equal to AX because of reflexive property, so the AX in this triangle and the AX in the other triangle are both sides, and I have angle-angle side. So, triangle ABX 
it has to be congruent to triangle ACX because of angle, angle, side. That's it. This is how you're going to do your homework. I hope you guys have a great night, and I will see you in class. Bye.